there's usually literally a little, a little bit of a delay between YouTube and this, but. <laughs> Great way to start off. It started off with me um, uh, mispronouncing something in there, but. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bat Feed, your source for Batman news lore and so much more. I've got Giant Panda King here with me, Russell himself. How's it going, Russell? I'm good. Very early in Australia at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's about 5 a.m. over by you, right? Yeah, 5.30 now. Yeah. 5.30. So he uh, carved time out of his busy schedule, especially this early in the morning, to come answer any questions you guys might have. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good time. Um, we've got a few things to get out of the way before we start with the Q&A portion. So, uh, Russell, do you want to take it away with uh, um, uh, the about shipping? Book? Yep. Yeah. So, just for everyone being, um, thank you for everyone for being very patient during this. We're very frustrated with the current situation. Um, Australia's in a very hardcore lockdown. I've said very three times already. Um, but yeah, we're in a pretty hardcore lockdown at the moment. Uh, being an island, it makes everything a lot harder for us because we're a bit landlocked. So shipping's delayed, um, incoming and outgoing. Um, where it's only essential workers only and book binding and printers aren't essential workers at the moment. So they're not, they're a little bit behind just doing the final stage. Uh, you know, before the lockdown got called up, we probably thought we were only gonna get plan America um, from American based printers. Um, even though just to clarify, American based printers still mainly print offshore. So there is still going to be, if we go to that option, there'll still be, you know, we still have to ship it to America from another country. Um, but it might be the quicker option. Um, we're just kind of waiting at the moment. It's just a little bit hard to get concrete answers off people because no one's really at work at the moment in Australia to uh, answer those questions. It just takes a few days. We usually it only take a few minutes. So thank you for your patience. It will be worth the wait. And we do apologize that it is, again, that it is uh, being held up, but it is beyond our control. Um, Australia is just a lot stricter than most countries when it comes to the coronavirus because uh, we are an island. Um, yeah, we we just can't. We it's like similar to New Zealand. We just go straight into a lock, hard lockdown as soon as we get any type of corona um, cases. Um, funnily enough, it's our cases are nothing compared to the rest of the world. But if they did get out in Australia, it would be way worse for us. We have a, like a very vulnerable indigenous population. Um, mo you know, we have a lot of infrastructure, but we're still an island. So even if we wanted to get like extra ventilators or anything like that, we have to get them from overseas. So we are very strict in controlling the outbreak here. And it just, the unfortunate side is that, yeah, it just, when we have to go into lockdown, we go into a real hardcore lockdown. Yeah. And you were telling me too that it's kind of mutated over to the animals now too a little bit some of the livestock. Yeah, well, that's what they're saying. I um I haven't got into it too much, but they're um they're also very wary that the coronavirus is now entering um uh, animal kind of variant as well. Yeah, I don't know the truth and all that stuff, but I, that's what I've heard on the news. Um, yeah. I don't want to get yeah. on too much of a side tangent there, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, and, Australia, and Australia was a little bit behind in the vaccines because we, you know, it just takes a while to get it here. And we have a couple of vaccines locally, but, um, you know, they're trying to encourage that at the moment. But there's only like 35%, I think, of Australia vaccinated at the moment. So everyone's rushing to get that kind of through. But like everywhere else, we have people who are holding off the vaccination and don't want to wear masks and whatnot. So that always adds to it. So yeah, we're very frustrated at the moment. I can feel everyone's frustration out there, but we are trying our best to get them to you as soon as possible. Yeah. And I think it goes without saying, at least for most of us, I know there are some people that are a little impatient to get their hands on it, which I totally understand, but you know, we're rooting for you guys. It's, it's an all around tough situation, so. Yeah, and yeah. all I can say is it will be this year. It's definitely gonna be within like, yeah. I want to get something sent off within the next month, you know. Um, I just can't say whether it's going to be next week, the week after, or the week after, you know. It's just, yeah. you just have to wait until uh, the government eases its restrictions slightly. Um, and let just let, you know, people go back to work. And once that's the case, we can start shipping it over. But our backup is getting it printed overseas as well. So yeah. something will be there shortly. Um, and just be um, in mind, uh, keep in mind that 
we're not Amazon guys. There's only two people who run my company. <laughs> That's me and my business partner, Craig. Um, he's the other person who's credited as the creative director. Um, basically, everything in it, like every bit of costume, every bit of artifact, all that kind of stuff, we have to make ourselves from scratch, you know? Then we have to shoot it, find the models, find the, like make the costumes, all that kind of stuff. And we've added 50 pages and we didn't ask for, we didn't increase the price at all for that. So basically we're charging the same price as we did for the first run, mm -hmm. but we're giving you an extra 50 pages, you know, um, on top, just to make the story better, make the book better, because we know people kind of would appreciate that. But uh, yeah, we're not Amazon. We can't do same day delivery. We make stuff as people want it. We just can't afford to have, you know, 3,000, 4,000 books in stock. We're not a big company, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for the update. I'm sure everybody appreciates that a lot. Um, I'm sure they're frustrated a lot. <laughs> you're all super, I'm, I'm super excited to get my hands on it. I think I ordered like two copies. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I've got my, uh, my brothers in law are uh, pretty excited to get a copy of it. I ordered it for them, but. Oh, well, you get all the new stuff. We've got, we're added like yeah. three new sections and like 30 new characters. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, so now that we've done that, we can uh, just move on to the Q&A portion, I guess. I think I have the option, um, as we pick questions, I'll, I'll pop it up here as a banner, and that way we'll be able to see it. Um, and who posed the question, I believe you, I believe so. Uh, so for you guys, before we get started with the Q&A, because I'm sure you guys have tons of questions, um, there might be too many for us to keep up with. Uh, and an option that you guys can do. Like I said, we'll pick one and we'll put it up on the screen uh, as we answer them. But if you see the little uh, dollar sign button like in the bottom of your live chat on YouTube, uh, another way you can do um, questions is like sending a super chat and it'll highlight it and put it up like kind of highlighted to see. So it'll be easier to catch the questions and we'll more likely get to them faster. But yeah, anyways, if you guys have questions, go ahead and start asking away. There were a couple that popped up earlier. Somebody, it was Lux, asked about um, a YouTuber. <laughs> I have no idea who likes somebody is. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone yeah. has a guess, I, I'm not, uh, I don't hop on social media that much. It kind of drives me insane a bit. Um, so I'm completely out of it on who, who's the big uh, accounts on there, especially the ones from Australia. Sure. Yeah. And then 17 million subs, they must be doing something good. Yeah, <laughs> I would guess. This was the first question that popped up after I asked people to give questions. So Lux again. Why did you make it? Why did you want to make a second edition? Um, basically because the fans wanted it. You know, we first put out the book three years ago and we did a pre-sale, but it was kind of hard because we did the pre-sale and um, we just want to keep tinkering with it, but we had to get it out, you know? So we got it out to the people um, after talking about it for ages and we finally got it out to everybody. But to me, I just want to add it a little bit more. I wasn't quite content with a few things. And the problem with me is then if I want to add a little bit, I always end up adding a lot. So, the second edition really was just going to be a reprinting, you know, with just the, cause we, um, last time there was a mistake with the printing, um, the printer who we used was a China Chinese based printer and they used one of the earlier drafts as the printing draft, like the third last draft we used. So they used the one with all the grammar and spelling mistakes, especially towards the end, um, which always really frustrated us, but they didn't, we, you know, we already printed all, all the books they weren't going to yeah, we didn't find out until you know we already had them and started sending them kind of thing. So a big part was fixing that, and then I said, well, you know, I kind of want to move this character around, or I want to add this a little bit to this character. I want to add to this, and then when I started getting into it, I fall in love with the characters who a lot of people have forgotten or don't really care about. So like the Seven Men of Death, you know, um, they're very much '80s kind of concept or '90s, but you know, they're all part of the League of Assassins. And once I got into those characters, I had so much fun because people don't know them. So I get a little bit more creative license with them. 
Um, so that's where that kind of started adding more characters. And then the cover, <clears throat> I know some people, if they went through our Instagram, they would have seen the original mock-up cover from uh, of Gotham um, from years ago. And then when we went to shoot reshoot that cover with Anthony again, the guy who plays the Joker and whatnot, <clears throat> with the, and he didn't have, in the original mock-up, he didn't have any of the prosthetics or mm-hmm. fake teeth. Sure. Um, but it always looked really cool. And we just c- couldn't get Anthony shaved his head <laughs> prior to um, prior prior to the original book getting released. So what we did was we just took a behind the scenes photo, what looked kind of interesting, and then we used that as the cover. And then after that, we um, for this one, I said, well, wouldn't it be cool if we could get the original vibe back again? So that's what we aimed at, and we went and shot Anthony. Funnily enough, Anthony sh- shaved his head again. So that. That photo on the new cover is actually made up of three different photos. That's all there is. I ended up using Anthony's hair from the original mock-up, and then I used his face from one of the photos, and then his mouth from another photo, just to get that kind of perfect. And I really love the kind of new cover. It has the kind of level of dread I wanted on it. Yeah. Yeah. Long story short, second edition it was just mainly the fans, you know, because we thought you know there was no real interest in it, and you know through your videos and, you know, Cult of Batman and, you know, the uh, Fat Man Beyond, we kind of started getting um, a bit of heat for the project. So it's been going strong now for coming up to almost a year. But, um, yeah, yeah. The fir- for the first three years, no one even wanted the book. I- I'd give the book away to people. I'd go, did you read it? Yeah, I'll ask him through it. <laughs> Any uh, music out the there, it's like when you make a new CD and you're literally just passing it out for free to try and get the word out. <laughs> Pretty much, because no, yeah. I, I put towards them like just give them away. No one's buying them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the cool. problem when you make high concept kind of things. If you have, if it's too hard to explain, people just kind of move on. You know? Yeah. Cool. All right, we'll move on to the next question. After the documentaries, will you make a complete timeline of the events of nineteen nineteen to nineteen thirty nine, leading up to Bruce's return to his retirement, to his eventual return to prominence in nineteen fifty five? Uh, a lot of people have asked me that <laughs> to make a timeline and I have to go back through all my research again just to double check everything <laughs> but if I make a timeline I feel like I'm just digging my grave with people going finding contradictions in my research <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of vague on purpose I will probably do a timeline it's um the book itself is a timeline essentially like it's just big gaps you know and it is kind of in the order of things happening you know so if you want to look at the book itself and i know a lot of people don't have the book and they're going off the video so they don't understand how the book works but it's broken up into like sections like 1919 to 1923 1923 to 1927 1928 to 19 so mm-hmm. we actually have the timeline which is the actual book itself but if you want it condensed into you know kind of like one page PDF or something like that. I might do it. I just need to kind of work it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot the same thing. So the book, I don't think you guys fully yeah. understand. Like when you watch the videos, you got to understand back thieves only probably covered about quarter of the book. So far. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so if you're everyone like, freaking out about like, you know, killer croc, don't worry, he's coming. And so are a lot of the other ones you guys have been asking for. So I don't think you've even used like, Batmite or Tweedledum to nope. do characters. <laughs> like, yeah. Lady Shiva, you know, none of those characters have meant you've used yet, I don't think. It's gonna be it's gonna be a blast covering those ones for sure. But yeah, I'm going through a lot of the same putting together the eighteen eighty nine series right now because it's like, okay, if if like for Bruce to fit right in that age range, he essentially had to be born like right before the Civil War. And I mean like literally a month before the civil war <laughs> yeah so he he um i always worked out that he started when he was so he went to he went to war in 1919 right after college so that kind mm-hmm. of gives you a definition of roughly how he's there so then he comes back and starts being batman around 27 and he kind of retires around about 47 sure okay so that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of where he kind of fits yeah that's cool um okay next question clang 200 hello giant panda king how are you 
My question is, what's the page count for the book? I think it's just sitting at around approximately 250 pages. Hmm. Hardcover. So just be aware, like, a lot of people ask me, is this character in it? Is this character in it? Is this character in it? I try and put all the characters in the, in some form, like I even mention certain characters who I can't take photos of just so they exist somewhere in the universe. Just because they're not mentioned, they're not in the book doesn't mean they're not in the universe. It's just the book's like a collection of like uh, documentation. So they might not have all documentation on all the people who are active at the time, especially with secret societies and secret identities and whatnot. Um, but I also tell people, usually the same people who are asking me, is this character in it, is this character in it, also the same people complaining about the price. Just remember the more characters I add, the thicker the book's gonna be, the more expensive it's gonna make, the more expensive it's gonna ship. Like currently the book, each book, I don't know what this is in, um, you use pounds over there, don't you, for weight. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're in the metric system, so. We should be in the metric system. It's but... one7 <laughs> kilos per book okay yeah you know which you guys can work that out but it's um it's quite a heavy book you know yeah for sure the, so, yeah. the, first the answer is i would have loved to add probably about another dozen more pages and i yeah. might in the future if there's a demand for it but mm -hmm. it's just that it just makes the book so expensive like i had to get really creative and cull a lot of stuff like i had to take some stuff out of the second run what was in the first run you're still going to get all the characters. I just had to tweak a few things to actually make it affordable because if I added another eight pages or something, we would have gone into the next shipping um, weight barrier. Yeah. And that would have made the shipping even more expensive, which I know a lot of people can, that's the big kind of thing they don't want us to pay. Um, but I always say to everyone, welcome to Australia. <laughs> we have to pay for everything, extreme shipping. So yeah. like to go and see a band in Australia from America is usually eighty dollars ninety dollars you know just to see an american band you know mm -hmm. but if i take a, one of my bands when i used to manage bands to america i couldn't charge more than ten dollars fifteen dollars you know so mm -hmm. we australia's just used to paying more for things because because we are like i said before we are an island so yeah. to get anything here is expensive and get anything out is expensive um, if you live in asia or new zealand or anywhere in the southern hemisphere it's not too bad you know and we are trying to do we do have a local distro in the US, so that's why we have the US uh, store element. I am gonna try and make that a little bit clearer for people. It's just kind of the the um, program or the app we use to process all the um, orders doesn't have a lot of uh, custom options on it. Sure. So we have to actually make a new page for the US-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a lot of people who were like ordering from the Australia website and they were like, why is it so much more expensive? I thought you said it was like, and I was like, there's go to US, you're forgetting the US dot at the beginning of that. <laughs> yeah, and also it says so on the like the web page, if you just look yeah. before you order, it says, do you want to order from the US store? And you click that. So <laughs> you don't always have to follow the link, you just have to read it <laughs> properly. Yeah. There you go, everybody. <laughs> Um, okay, this is this has been a question that's popped up quite a bit. Uh, M. McNulty, so what is your personal opinion on the Joker's backstory in 1919 to 39? Well, I grew up in a time where we didn't have an origin for the Joker. We had multiple. So depending on you, if you're a fan of the Killing Joke or you're a fan of the classic Joker or if you're a fan of, you know, the animated series version of Jack Napier or the original Batman 89 version as well, like, you know, when I... My first main version of the Joker was the 66 Batman television series, which he never had an origin in that, you know? And um, that's what I grew up with until kind of, you know, then I was that kind of perfect age to see the 89 Batman movie at the cinemas. Um, and that was a cultural icon. You know, I had the bat signal, signal shaped into the back of my head when I was like a not an eight year old. <laughs> so, um, and he that gangster origin was kind of what I, I always sat with because then you see mask of the phantasm and it has he's essentially the same character yeah um and that's kind of what i always thought that was until you start getting into the, like the killing joke and the red hood kind of stuff where you know puts question marks and you kind of question the whole thing and then you when you get to something like you know the dark knight where 
he gives you five different origin stories in that film or whatever it is. Um, for me personally, I like the ambiguity of it all. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that you don't know exactly where it comes from. I keep very vague about the Joker. All I say his origin is he's a response to um, Batman and the world after World War One, where everyone was trying to forget the horrors they saw by putting on this fake smile. And um, also being inspired by that the movements around that point, which started a little bit earlier, um, but the Dada movement and the Surrealist movement. Mm -hmm. So people like Salvador Dali, for example. And that's what I always said about the Joker for me. He's like a combination of John Dillinger and Salvador Dali. With a bit of a game put in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fun spin. And if you guys wanted to get like kind of an idea, you could go and look these people up on Wikipedia and just kind of blend them all together in your mind. And that, that really helps you to get an understanding for this iteration of Joker. Yeah, as I mentioned to a lot, I always mention like the answers are in the book because they're in the answers are in history. Everyone's based on everyone in the book has a real life counterpart. No matter how extreme it is, there's always a real life counterpart. <laughs> all right. Moving on, uh, Cactus Box says or asks, "Will there be a third edition for people who didn't get the second edition?" Yeah, so like I said, we're putting in. Um, it won't be really a third edition; it'll just be more more um, print. So, I, I think you're just thinking, "Is it going to be a third print run?" There will be. Uh, we're actually doing it at the moment because, like I said earlier, with the shipping in Australia might be delayed, so I'm printing up another thousand that will live in the US. So um, because it seems where most of the orders are coming from at the moment. So um, we'll, we just don't want to put it on sale now until we have it uh, 100%. So once we have it, we'll, we'll open up the page again. It's not going to be pre-order. Um, when that time comes, you'll be quite fortunate because we should have it in stock and you should be get it. If you're in the US and you order it one day, you should have it the next day or the day after when um, we open that up again. It's just the pre-orders who are um, getting frustrated at the moment. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know this one has popped up quite a bit. <laughs> um, if you can make Spider-Man content, would you? Uh, Thomas is asking. Yeah, yeah, I would. I'd need an angle, though. Like, it's one thing just going, yeah, I'll do this person, do this person, do this person. But what makes it different from all the other Spider-Man content out there? You know, and we've got no shortage of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose you could say the same with Batman. There's no shortage of Batman content out there either. But, um Spider-Man is great, but like, I'd, if I went and did it, I'd have to do a proper like '60s version of him or an '80s version. I don't know. <laughs> He's got a great rogues gallery and whatnot. Um, I'd definitely have to do that one in the states because that would be a bit tricky not to do it in New York, you know, because he's sure. such a part of his identity is being on rooftops and side of buildings and all that kind of thing. Um, I probably wouldn't do Spider-Man to tell you the truth. Um, there's just so much out there for him already, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think I could add anything new to him. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, Rohit is asking, what was the hardest character to adapt into the 1919, 19, 19, uh, 1939 world of Gotham? Um, they all have their challenges because, you know, taking on people like Batman, for example, who's meant to be an imp from another dimension and put him in a grounded kind of reality. Um, but I don't see those hard. I see those ones as fun. You know, I see those as like, how can I make this work in my vision? Um, so the more fantastic characters like Batmite, Man Bat, Mr. Freeze and all that, I'm like dulling down their power set. Like Clay, I know a few people complained about Clayface when you did a video that he really wanted to be shape-shifting powers. I'm like, well, giving him those powers will kind of defeat the grounded reality we're going for. We've turned him more into like a Dick Tracy villain, um, which is more similar to his first appearance as well. Um, and, you know, as you can kind of tell, all the villains in our story are all very tragic figures. You know, they all have very sad lives and they're all, most of them come from abusive, drunken households. Like, it's not too crazy to, you know, that's pretty much close to the truth because, if you, you know, there's a reason prohibition came in because the alcohol alcoholism was so rampant in America at that point, you know, so many women were getting like domestic violence was huge. Now the people who grew up in that world would have come 
you know, from broken houses and done what they could to kind of survive. And then if they go off to war, then they learn how to fight, they learn how to use weapons, and they come back being scarred and seeing stuff they've never even seen before. Like, you know, World War I was so full on as far as, you know, the casualties and the weapons, because no one had used those weapons before in open combat. Um, they were all very new technology, and what they did on the battlefield was unseen before, you know? So using the war as a way to ground people was one of my big things with my character adaptions. Like, I don't know what I've got from it. I'd say the hardest thing for me was in this newest run during the Court of Hours. <laughs> Just because I, I was doing so many things. <laughs> Court of Hours, Court of Hours, Court of Hours. I'm like, don't guys understand. Court of Hours on its own seems like a good idea. But when you put it next to the Order of St. Dumas, the false face society and everything like they're all secret societies you know yeah. how many secret societies can gotham have you know is it um, secret anymore or is it just like a club that people can join <laughs> yeah, so adapting that i said okay i'm gonna do this 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 and then i realized um i realized what i, I found a real life i remembered about a real life uh, counterpart to the court of owls and once i found that i was like Tetris, everything locked in. You know, it was like the final piece of the jigsaw. And then, so that was probably the hardest this time around is actually doing the Court of Hours justice, but making it feel fresh. And I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Court of Hours. I think, uh, I know a lot of people are. Um, I'm just wasn't the right age. I felt like I had read it before, you know. Um, sure, yeah. It's just, and I'm not very interested in like, you know, a lot of those stories like, you know, the Nightmare Batman series, series and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just a bit extreme. I, I love my Batman being a bit more grounded, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And for anybody who's like waiting for the Court of Owls, it's, it's coming and I think you guys will like it, but it's also a very interesting take on them. And if you guys wanted to make it, oh, very different. But as a Court of Owls fan myself, uh, you're welcome, Russell. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I love it and I think you guys will too. So, yeah. Yeah, I gave, I gave um, Batfeet a, a early peek at what the story was going to be because he's working on the video. I don't think he realized how dark I was going to go with it. <laughs> well, I just remember getting uh, getting some preliminary pictures and stuff, and you were like, will you shut up about it now? <laughs> Anyways. Um, Sean asks, do you think you will ever do a 1919 short film? Um, I don't know. I, I was doing a web series. Well, I started doing a web series a few years ago, but you know, I can only throw so much money at this stuff without <laughs> earning any money back. And I don't do Kickstarters or anything like that. So yeah. it's all my money I go and earn and I put back into these projects. And sometimes they make money, sometimes they don't. Um, the series I was working on was like a Joker series. And I shot it around about seven years ago. Um, but I've never finished it. I never finished the short film. And I'm thinking of doing it at the end of the year, just finishing it because all the footage is done. But it's a really grounded contemporary take on Joker, how he takes over like the crime in Gotham. And it's all these like short little stories. Um, it's called The Pale Smile. That's the web series. Um, we might do, we'll finish off the short one, what we've already done. The, like the, some people may have seen some behind the scenes photos on my Instagram where I'm like the Joker sitting in a Dodgem car um, or a bumper car you guys call it um and basically that was just meant to be a teaser to kind of set up the tone of the world now if we if there is enough of an interest in that short film we'll we'll do it i did do a, like a little teaser based on the joker from a few years back when i did my stage show the batman follies of 1929 mm -hmm. uh, if anyone hasn't seen that google it i did a vintage stage show um which you know it's basically people playing the characters from the headlines, you know, but except the Joker, the Joker's meant to be the same person who's from the headlines and on stage. But for that, we did a promo um, about the Joker. And it's just him putting on um, makeup. <laughs> and, and it goes for a minute, but it's quite effective, you know, and if I did do it, it'd be something in that style, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm sure other people would be excited. I'm, I'm very excited. If you do end up making that to see it eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've done so much of the work on the book. Like the book is meant to be like a film or a TV series. Yeah. You know? 
And once you get the book, you kind of, it is a journey. Um, you don't really get that journey when you have seen like Fat Fiends videos because they're broken up and they come from different points of view as far as the territory. It's the same story, but it's different people telling it, so to speak. Um, but in the book context of the book, when you see all these characters next to each other and you're turning from page to page, the balance of the characters is very important in the storylines. You, you don't want too much doubling up. Yeah. Which is a lot of doubling up in Batman. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much, there's so much similarities in some of the storylines that I started combining things like, oh, cause yeah. I, I'm doing like Mask of the Phantasm, um, in this new version. And I have her where she gets trained. They never really mentioned where she got trained in the animation. Right. But her look and her weapon is so similar to, um, Azrael's. Hmm. So I have her training with the Order of St. Demas. Ooh. Yeah, I like so that it's taking those things and grounding them in my world even more. So. Yeah, for sure. That's that's awesome. Really looking forward to that too. Um, Vince Burns is asking, can you explain the Planet of the Apes book you were working on more? And do you have any plans for more Gotham-like lore-heavy books? Yeah, well, our next one, definitely what we're doing is the Ghostbusters book. And if you like Gotham, you'll love the Ghostbusters one. It's going to have probably 10 times more detail in it than Gotham been busy creating like 30 original ghosts, six original vehicles, you know, two new proton packs, um, new kind of Ghostbuster weapons. There's over 50 new Ghostbusters. It's set over 30 years. So we're shooting in different formats and all sorts of stuff. Um, but that's the next book we're doing. And then after that, we're looking at maybe doing a follow-up to Gotham. Um, we, if there's enough interest, we're going to, the way we do is we announce the books and if there's enough interest, we make them. You know, so if you are interested in any of our books, make sure you register because that's the only way we're going to make them. Um, so yeah, that one I can, I'll can most well say it now, um, what we're working on. Um, but basically that one's going to be Metropolis 1925 to 1945. So it will run parallel partly to um, the Gotham book, but just because it's Metropolis and it's based on, you know, Superman and alien technology and parasite and doomsday and cyborg superman and all that kind of crap we have to kind of you know that super i feel like superman would actually change the course of history mm. batman would might have a ripple effect but you know it'd still be the same kind of history but introducing superman would actually change history so i'm just kind of managing that at the moment as far as what would a super powered person be like and i need to justify things like for like this morning i was just working working it out while i was up early going okay why didn't he fight in world war one because he would have wanted to fight in world war one you know so all his friends would have gone off to war and you know he um would have been of age and he's from a rural area where there would have been a lot of pressure to serve and all that kind of stuff i thought well, maybe he could say he had an eye you know defect and he had to wear glasses and he failed the medical and the reason he wears the glasses and you know seems like a weak human is because his parents forced him not to go to war because you know him being on the front line would is not kind of a, a fair advantage kind of thing they have to really look at the ethics of him fighting in world war one and being you know then after, that's one of the big reasons seeing so many of these you know these humans die and he couldn't do anything there, so he found a way he could help people, and that was becoming Superman. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use that story or not. I'm just kind of coming up with ideas at the moment, but Concept. essentially, I have to justify his decisions as Superman based on his time period, and also I have to look at the big things that would be affected by someone who has superpowers. So World War One, World War Two, you know, like we already know, we reason we're ending in 1945. It's the year that. Um, the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan. And at that point, Superman just gets under. <laughs> um, I won't tell you the rest of the story though, because I, I'll keep a surprise and I need to kind of work it all out. Uh, yeah. But in regards to Planet of the Apes book, that's going to be a photography book. Um, so we're going to be recreating all the super famous uh, covers of like Life magazine and Time magazine. So the probably most famous ones everyone knows is the sailor kissing the nurse um, at the end of World War Two in New York. Um, now imagine that with apes. 
So we're using the original 1960s Planet of the Apes makeup, but we were recreating all the famous covers of Life magazine and Time magazine. All these images were burned into history, um, some of the most famous images ever, but they were going to be done with original Planet of the Apes prosthetics. So That's there's a so lot of work in this. There's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen those, go check them out. I know I'm I'm on the younger side, but I'm the kind of person to go and find those old movies because I like to know where the roots of things come from. And yeah, and, and they're they're fantastic. They you know, okay. they're a way of talking about slavery and civil rights. I mean they talk they'll do these stories the same way the same time you're having the civil rights movement, for example. So it's good sci fi, you know. It's oh, yeah. a fantastic story, but it's very much grounded in current events. Yeah. Even to this day. <laughs> Um, what's the story for Bronze Tiger? Yeah, because I know a lot of people have been, uh, I, I, they caught wind, I think, because you posted something on Instagram. A lot of people. Yeah, so um, Bronze Tiger, <clears throat> he trains at the same time as Bruce. He's one of the students who uh, trains with the League of Assassins. Um, there's a few other characters too, like uh, Richard Dragon. And whatnot. I don't take a photo. Of, I haven't taken a photo of Richard Dragon, but he was one of the other students there. And they trained under O Sensei, um, and basically he um, he becomes one of the Seven Men of Death. And people who don't know, the Seven Men of Death are the top killers of the League of Assassins, um, and he's one of them. Uh, but during during the Shadow War, he kind of uh, switches allegiance to um, Batman's team essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot more to it, but I'm not going to give you too much shit yet. You yeah. have to wait till it. It's part of the journey of the book is reading all these characters and see their future in the book as well. <laughs> um, okay. We've got the guy I got for bronze tiger though. He was like six, six foot eight. Wow. <laughs> this huge size, size 15 shoe. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I mean, but, but the guy was even more impressive was the guy I got to play Professor Pig. He was like yeah. 8XL. Oh. He was 8XL. I honestly thought that that was like a model or something or wearing prosthetics. but No, that was a guy. So that was, um, he was 8XL in the shirt. I had to cut the back of the shirt to fit it on him. And then he, um, he was taller than me, so he must be 6 foot 5. Wow. And I reckon he must be in almost 200 kilos. Big guy, very big guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were telling me about the person who wore the uh, the Ezreal Batman costume. <clears throat> He's like a stunt double in Shang Chi or something like that. Yeah. So that that's that's the guy. So um, I think it's Laser Fist or something. Razor Fist. The sure. yeah in Shang Chi as the one arm with the blade on it. So. He's a big dude. He's the guy who um, was in the last Rocky of the Creed movie that we played out, you know, Draco's son. Okay. Um, so he's a big guy and he's, he's doubles in the book play. He, he's Azrael. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. You um, can't get it. You can't get a gauge how big he is in that book. I suppose you can, because you've got the mask. Got the the mask <laughs> you. I mean, you, compare, you compare it to the guy we have. And yeah. This thing is, this is just next to my head. It's like twice the size of my head. So yeah, he fits. That fits him like a glove. So yeah, <laughs> you'll get the echo in your head. Everyone thinks those masks are cool until you know <laughs> it reverberates. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the location of Gotham. Yes, the uh, chain of islands off the coast of New Jersey. That's what it is in the comics. Uh, kind of the name obviously is based off New York, Gotham, but. Um, so our Gotham, we it's a mix of Chicago and New York. That's our version, but it's based in New Jersey. So it's not a real city, so we can put it anywhere. You know, um, to me, Gotham is an East Coast city, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got that vibe to it. Um, you know, a lot of people always used to say Metropolis was New York by day and Gotham was New York by night, you know. Um, for me, it's a little bit different than that. Like, it's not it's so simple. Metropolis has a lot of new money and Gotham has a lot of old money in it, you know? Um, it has to have a port. It has to have some islands as well off the coast. Um, you know, I think I made Blackgate an island based on Alcatraz, you know? So 
we kind of, yeah, it's, it is a combination of a few different cities and different locations. So kind of can be wherever, but we, it feels like it should have been New Jersey state, you know? Sure. Yeah. I remember seeing on the, on Penguin's rap sheet. Yeah. It said Gotham city, New Jersey. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, James Nerdman85 wants to know, where did you get the image of Arkham Asylum? Um, well, there's a few vintage images in the book, and that's a, a proper vintage one. And I got that from one of the, you know, photo library places where you pay to, you know, use the image and whatnot. Now, that's, I believe, was a very state-of-the-art uh, hospital facility. Um, mm. And with Gotham, I always, sorry, with Arkham, everyone always does the gothic look, you know, and makes it old and creepy and everything. And I always kind of think, like, sterile, a sterile environment with just all white and, you know, very bareness of it all is way more scary. Like, one floor of the cuckoo's nest kind of vibes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it's just a standard image. I don't know where the original building's from. Um, that one just connected with me. The dread of it, it looks like this monolith tombstone kind of thing. Like people are going in there, they're not coming back out. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's one of the, uh, I think that's actually the episode of our video series that blew up the most. It's got almost 500K views right now. It's got the freaks in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, this is one we briefly talked about earlier. Does Polka Dot Man exist in this universe? I wonder how many people would have asked this question three months ago. <laughs> Really? <laughs> uh, sure, he does, but I haven't taken a photo of him. The part of the book is there's enough leeway in the book and enough, you know, gaps in there where a lot of people can kind of work out where those people would fit in. You know, part of the fun for me, especially this happened with Kingdom Come when I was the right age when Kingdom Come came out. I was in my teens. And there's so many Easter eggs in there and there's so many kind of things that just open it up. Like, I think there's one throwaway line where it says Tim Drake joined the CIA and that wasn't even in the book. That was in like this, like uh, they called it revelations, which was like uh, Alex Ross's sketchbook. So if you got the like hard cover um, edition, you get this like sketchbook with it. And no, it wasn't even that. It was on the collector cards, actually, the Kingdom Come collector cards. Um, and they talk about Tim Drake joining the CIA in that. Oh. And I just love that little thing. Like it wasn't in the book. It wasn't in the like sketchbook. It wasn't any of the behind the scenes stuff, what like wizard put out or anything like that. It was a throwaway line on the back of a trading card. That's mm -hmm. it. And that's where I kind of got the CIA thing of Tim Drake. And in my version, I made him join the FBI or the BOI at that time. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, so Polka Dot Man could very easily exist in this universe. I don't know if I'd have him throwing interdimensional polka dots at people. It'd be a lot more grounded, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lore Ethereum wants to know, after World War I, did anything interesting happen during or after World War II? Any other world conflicts? Yeah, well, the best thing is we have an epilogue in the book. And the epilogue goes into a lot of that stuff. So... There's different little nods to like the Arkham City games. There's nods to Dark Knight Returns. There's that thing. There's um, nods to the Suicide Squad in World War Two. You know, um, we have a lot of little Easter eggs in there for you to kind of. You can part of it is finding this stuff as you read the book. I always love books where you can go back and revisit, and you keep finding stuff. You know, so I don't want to give everything away over this feed, but like once you read the book, you'll just keep seeing more and more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lux. If the bat feed was in Gotham 1919, what character would he be? Or what character do you see him as? The calculator. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Trying to find another question that we haven't already answered. A lot of people have been repeating questions and my, my mods are in the chat kind of like, they already answered this, so. Shout out to my mods for doing that. <laughs> All right. How old is Bruce Wayne in the book? Kind of briefly. Basically, at 19, in 1919, he's around about 20, uh, 27. Yeah. All right. 
I'm going to hop a little bit to the end there and see some of the newer questions. There we go. And I mean, you don't have to give too much away about this one, but how does Hush work in this timeline? Well, Hush is hard because he has a lot of characteristics similar to Black Mask, like his backstory and whatnot. So I had to kind of take elements of him, but I made him a bit more behind the scenes in the shadows, a mastermind of manipulating things. And he comes in towards the end of the story, I believe. But um, yeah, his story is very long. Like it's one of the longest stories in there. So <laughs> best just to read the book on that one. But yeah, he, he definitely is in there and he grew up with Bruce and he resents Bruce. And he's one of the few people in the book who works out Batman's true identity and uses it against him. Yeah. Yeah. Hush is a, an interesting character, but kind of back to what you were saying, it's like how many really like new characters are there out there after a while? Everything, everything under the sun that could be done. You don't realize until you see all the characters next to each other how much they're similar. Yeah. Um, okay. It looks like uh, most of the questions that we're getting now are um, just kind of repeats of ones we've already answered. So for anybody who didn't get your questions answered this time around, uh, just go back and watch the video the replay after we'll do one of these after everyone gets their book as well because that will yeah. that'll have that'll create another next level deep kind of question for sure but i think uh i think that might be a wrap so awesome thank you Thanks, so much guys as, just us. just to recap the books are coming it's just we're dealing with a pandemic at the moment and yeah. you know they're all done they just need to be the last bit of binding needs to just be done on them and we just need to ship them out. But the backup is we are printing some more in the States. Jesse, whatever happens first, you that's the one you'll get. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Russell. It was a no blast problem. having you on. Actually, like in, in real time this time. So <laughs> that's great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for making it work. All righty. You guys have a great rest of your day. And remember, the night is always darkest before the dawn. And I promise you, the dawn is coming. Uh, I'm going to let Russell chill out slash get back to sleep because it's <laughs> still more right, guys thank Peace you very out. much